Hey everybody, welcome back. Today on my channel, um, I'm going to address a question that I've had quite a bit. And um, you're, you might be wondering why I'm sitting between two identical small block Chevys that are completely machined and ready to build. This is actually a boat engine, believe it or not. And the, the boat has two engines. It's got a right and a left engine. I guess that would be starboard and something else. I'm not a, not a mariner, so I don't really know. Um, but anyway, they have two engines in this boat and the guy come to me and he said, hey, he said, I want to pull two skiers with my boat. He said he can, he's pulling two now, but the boat's really struggling. And it doesn't quite, I mean, there's a lot of resistance in the water, especially with two skiers. So he, he wants to be able to pull two skiers a little faster, um, going like 17 miles an hour with two skiers is not a lot of fun for the skiers. So, so I said, well, how much horsepower do you want? And he said, um, yeah, if I got a hundred extra horsepower, it, it'd be fine. And I was like, no problem. Taking two 350s and between the two getting 100 horsepower, that's 50 horsepower a piece, is easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a flat top piston in, bump the compression up, put a better set of heads on, and put bigger camshafts in them. And easily, probably more than 50 a piece, I would say. I'd say probably closer to 60 or 70 a piece with the heads and cam uh, package that we're using for these motors. But that's not what this video is about. So I just thought maybe I'd address that because I know when you see this, everybody's going to be like, why is there two 350s there? You know, so, okay. So here's the dealio. There are uh, basically two different rear main seal setups on the small block Chevy. There's an early setup, which is a two piece rear main seal. And then there's the later one, uh, which started in like, I believe 1986. And they went to a one piece rear main seal, which by the way is much better. So, but a lot of people get confused as to, you know, what they can do with these blocks, uh, what's the interchangeability of them and so forth. So I kind of want to talk about that. So first of all, let's talk about the early small block Chevy. Everything from 1955 all the way up to 85. Um, and let's, let's look at one of those crankshafts. Okay, so this is your early 350 Chevrolet crankshaft, and it it uh, this is the cap that goes on it. It has a rear main seal that's just this lip type seal. It's a two piece seal, and 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 the way that this works is the lip seal fits on this groove. It fits right there in that groove, and it's important when you put this on that the the lip portion of this, this lip here faces the oil. And, and basically, this cap goes on like that and it goes over the crankshaft like, just like so. And our lip seal, seal surface is here. And the lips, and, the, and also the, this lip here is gonna go in the block and it rides here just like that in the block. So that's your, your two piece rear main seal. Some of, some of the other differences are that the bolt pattern on the back of the crankshaft is different on the two-piece rear main seal than it is on the one-piece, which is what we have here. So this is the 1985 or 6 and up uh, rear main seal, which is a one-piece seal, and it actually has an aluminum housing that bolts to the back of the block. This is going to bolt onto the back of the block, and there's a gasket that goes here between the block and this, this housing. And if you look at the back of our marine engine here, this is a one-piece rear main seal. It has a dowel pin there. That guy just goes on there basically just like that. And it actually bolts onto the back of the crankshaft. And the rear of the crankshaft, you can see the flanges on the early and the later totally different. This the seal basically goes over that surface there. And this round one-piece seal rides in there now. So they are very different. Um, also, the bolt pattern here is not the same, so it takes a different flex plate. Now, here's the thing. And obviously, if you look at the caps next to each other, you can see, geez, they're totally different. The caps from this point here up are pretty much exactly the same. They take the same oil pump. They take the same oil pump drive. Um, the only difference is 
they don't have this extra piece for the rear main seal. They have this one piece set up that bolts onto the back. And of course the cranks are different. Now, the nice thing about these engines is pretty much anything you can do with this early crankshaft and block, you can do with this one. So the, the differences are the caps are different, the seals are different, the flex plate bolt pattern is different, so it takes a different flex plate, but that is about the gist of the difference. Everything that I can do with this motor, as far as cam, heads, uh, pistons, rods, whatever, is basically the same as this one. It takes the same main bearings, it takes the same rod bearings, you can use the same set of rods, you can use the same set of pistons. The bores on the block are the same. The, uh, the timing chain covers on the front of the blocks are the same, at least until you get up to the vortex. So uh, you could put the early heads on these blocks, you can put the early four barrel intakes on them. So really the only differences is in the way that the rear main seal mates, the way that the block, the block is designed differently, of course. But if you if you want to run one of these later model one piece rear main seal blocks and put all your early stuff in the block and on the block, it, it works. There everything is pretty much a hundred percent interchangeable on these things. So that's kind of the difference between the one piece and the two piece rear main seal. A lot of people think that they can't run these engines in earlier street rods or whatever, which is simply not true. So other than those differences that we just talked about, really the difference between the early and the late blocks is, is, is not much. I mean, you can literally take like a 98 Vortec block, tear it down, rebuild it, and you can put your 1970 cylinder heads and intake manifold on it, and down the road you go. You just have to have the right crankshaft and rear mainsail combination. So these blocks are very interchangeable, um, but I wanted to clear up that confusion because I, I, I've had a couple of questions about people wanting to know the difference between these two blocks. And you know, I, sometimes when I get questions that are good like that, I'll make a video about them. I can't make a video about all the questions because some of them are not that interesting. And then some of the questions I don't even understand what you're trying to ask me. So um, yeah, uh, but that's basically it. Hopefully that clears up some of the confusion on this, but whatever, if you're looking for a short block to build and you want to put it in an early street rod with a, your early heads or, or aftermarket heads or whatever, all these Chevy blocks, all the way up until they went to the LS line of engines, which was a transition, that the LS series is totally different, but these early small blocks are all pretty much interchangeable uh, within themselves one piece rear main, two piece rear mains. Now my advice is, if you can, get a one piece rear main seal because it's a much better seal. Um, the two piece rear main seals are, are more prone to leaking. Uh, seems like the one piece setups really, um, they really handle uh, the oil a lot better. And also, you can get aftermarket performance forged cranks, you can get stroker cranks for these one piece deals, I mean, you can build them, pretty much anything that's available for the earlier small blocks is available for these. And all of the accessory holes are the same. They bolt up to the transmission the same. The, the flex plate, even though, or the flywheel, even though it has a different bolt pattern on the crank, the outer portion of the flex plate where the, the ring gear is, is pretty much the same on most of them. Some of them vary a little, but all you gotta do is get a different starter for it, and it works just fine. So. Um, so hopefully that makes sense to you and uh, if you have any questions just make sure you ask below. Do me a favor and support this channel. Go to the ad address at patreon.com and pledge some money so we can do some cool builds. I appreciate your support and if you have any questions or comments please leave them below and I promise I will get back to you as soon as I can. I got to get back to this dual motor build here. I was thinking that playing a trick on the guy and making one of them like 100 horsepower more than the other one and that way the boat would be turning sideways everywhere it went but nah, that that's a bad idea i'm not gonna do that so anyway i appreciate you thank you and i will see you soon oh by the way those of you that are waiting for the 305 v6 build i'm very close to putting that thing on the run stand and running it all i'm waiting on basically is the carburetor so um stay tuned that is coming up